One of the things From Software is best at is showing you how far you've come. Maybe you've spent a few hours plunging into the depths of a dungeon or clawing your way up a castle. The signature From Soft oppressiveness is nothing without that light at the end of the tunnel. And no visual representation of that progress is more satisfying than the impressive showcases of verticality in many of FromSoft's games. Every good Souls world is a roller coaster where slow climbs are rewarded with a great view before diving right back down. Elden Ring's biggest accomplishment was giving players this feeling in an open world. While there are plenty of tighter knit areas that are from soft bread and butter, like the castles and the dungeons, the inherent non-linearity of the open world surrounding them still generally funneled players upward, in terms of where you started and ended the game and the general heights you climbed to, while still giving you plenty of opportunities to plunge and claw and struggle. I finished the DLC thinking the complete opposite. As massive as this DLC is, I found it to be a lot different in the way it goes about that philosophy. The main path is actually pretty similar to the base game, funneling you upward and pushing you higher and higher. But the main path is kind of the smallest part of the game in terms of how much space it actually takes up on the map. Many of Shadow of the Erdtree's biggest areas are very hard to actually get to. And the most frustrating part about that is that they're always right in front of you. Like some sort of sick game. I'm very aware of the fact that FromSoft is no stranger to hiding entire worlds behind paintings or whatever. Sometimes they make their areas hard to find, and I respect that. Not everything gels in this DLC like I think they wanted it to, though. The map of the Shadow Realm could have used some improvements. Elden Ring's worlds are multi-layered and mega-detailed, but I think exploration would have been much better if the map and the geography were used in tandem way more. The insane and, in my opinion, useless overuse of verticality only separates these two things further, and it helped ruin a lot of the fun of exploring this new place. There were only two times where I used the map to find the path to an area I was struggling to find, and it was here and here. The river is pretty self-explanatory, but using the map to find my way to the lower part of the ancient ruins was definitely the most rewarding. It's a little trickier, but the map clearly illustrates a pathway from a cave under this waterfall to an opening on the other side. Aside from those two, I don't think the map is very consistent in this way. I had a really hard time figuring out how to get to the upper level of the Cerulean coast. I scoured the entire lower area, thinking that there might be access points here or here, where it looks like you can cross over on this giant thing. It turns out, the only way you can get to it is a fork in the road to the volcano area, which I also had a hard time finding. You can call me stupid for not being able to find the entrance to that place. That one's probably on me. My problem is that there's only a single entrance to this upper area. There's only a single entrance to most areas in Shadow of the Earth Tree. The world being so big only makes this problem worse. I get what they were going for, but creating distinct levels in an open world doesn't work when the incentive to explore is ruined by the fact that reaching those levels required me using a guide. The entrance to a specific place could be quite literally anywhere. This is something the base game taught you over and over again, but many of those areas had more than one entrance. Bigger areas of the map may have only had a single entrance, but those were gated by something like an important boss fight. At the very least, getting to the next chunk of the map was much more obvious. In the DLC, I spent so much time running around and carefully examining every nook and cranny, only to finally look up a guide and find out that I wasn't even close to where I should have been to get to the place I wanted to be, while being within an arm's reach of that place. If the map or the environment had better context clues, this wouldn't be nearly as frustrating. But none of it means anything because finding these places through organic exploration just wasn't a thing. I really want to stress the idea that resorting to a guide is probably my least favorite thing to do when it comes to playing anything. I like spending my time exploring. It's one of my favorite parts of video games. But I don't like wasting my time looking. This DLC feels like a step back disguised as a return to form. Old Souls games have distinct levels that flow into one another through a technically open but ultimately linear kind of world. Elden Ring blew this concept into a real ass open world game and it was incredible. Shadow of the Earth Tree tried to keep this open world feeling while also having distinct levels that don't really flow into one another and it creates this weird 
disjointed balance of openness and linearity that just pissed me off. And the worst part is, it didn't have to be like this at all. Create a map that's better at discerning between specific layers of the world because there's so many here. Does there only have to be a single way to get to so many parts of the map? Do those entrances all have to be so cryptic and hidden that I have to end up using a guide? Did this DLC even need to be open world? The verticality and the vistas mean nothing if they're just set dressing. FromSoft has used it to their advantage before, so how come their latest attempt at something like this is so half-assed? It would be so cool if these giant cliffs and chasms actually meant something to the gameplay or the feeling of exploration or progression, but all they do is make the Shadow Realm feel artificial and make me ask... Dude, how the fuck do I get down there? Instead of... Uh... How do... How, how can I get down there? I have some other things I could say, but I, I largely enjoyed this DLC. Not nearly as much as base Elden Ring, but I think a lot of mine and everyone else's enjoyment of the game was based on how little we knew going in. Gene Park's Washington Post review for Elden Ring back in 2022 was headlined, No one is prepared for how colossal this game is. That phrase has been stuck in the back of my head ever since. It's a perfect summary of the game itself and the hurricane it created. Nobody was prepared for the genuinely colossal impact Elden Ring would have on wider gaming culture. Elden Ring's cultural impact was unexpected and unprecedented, and there's no way I expected Shadow of the Earth Tree to take off in that same way. You can call it an entire game on its own, it's surely big enough to be, but you aren't granted entry until you've made significant progress in the base game, which is something I really respect. FromSoft's DLCs are something for people who really put the time in and want more. They're not for people who picked up the game, got blasted by the Tree Sentinel, and never touched it again. All I wanted was a lot more Elden Ring. What I got was a little more Elden Ring and a lot more Dark Souls. But not nearly the amount of joy I got from exploring either of them.